What's up everyone, this is Hemorrhoid, aka Deep Fryer, bringing you another Super String video. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're doing fantastic. It is Friday afternoon for me, uh, but I don't know exactly when I'll be able to get this video out. I'd like to get it done today, but I have a bit of a busy day today and tomorrow, but we'll just have to uh, see what happens. But I definitely wanted to record this video uh, while the content is fresh in my mind. We're going to be taking a look at Suki Raid 9. That's right, uh, a lot of people consider this to be the hardest raid in the whole game. So I'm quite pleased to have uh, finally cleared it. Now it was not without many, many frustrations. Uh, there is a lot of RNG involved, and there are some very specific units and strategies that you're going to need to clear this content. So, that being said, uh, I did pre-record this footage, a lot of this very, very hard content that you have to try over and over many, many times in order to clear it. Uh, it is just easier if I pre-record that footage so that I'm not restarting my commentary every time I fail. And believe me, folks, I failed this one many, many times I tried it over and over for hours and hours between yesterday and today, uh, but we finally got it. Uh, I will point out, let's see, well first let's just talk about the team I used. Uh, I used Pasty, now I use her Shield EX, not the Ion Rifle. We've got Kawuka for that, for Kawuka's Shield and DPS obviously. Uh, one Soul for the uh, Immortality, we, we're going to need that to survive. The final wave. Uh, I've got, I have uh, Kang Hanwell. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, I, I've all, actually only got him level 65. This probably would have been a lot easier if I had him a bit stronger in my roster, but I'm still trying to finish leveling Tina, and after Tina, uh, I'm wanting to work on Red Swan because I pulled her EX a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I kind of want to work on Veronica as well. So, I mean, I've got a lot on my plate as far as SS agents go, so uh, I'm sure you can imagine the experience is a bit scarce right now on my account. But I'm also bringing Meyer. Now, Meyer is critical for that um, two-turn cooldown Oblivion. Meyer applies Oblivion for three turns with only a two-turn cooldown, so you can have perpetual Oblivion uh, on an enemy unit. But... The primary reason we like Meyer versus someone like Johan is that two-turn cooldown because we want to be able to Oblivion Suki Wave 1 and Suki Wave 2. Now Wave 3 is an entirely different story. In case you didn't know, Suki Raid 8 and 9 is no longer about doing DPS, it is about survival. You cannot kill Suki in the final wave, in raid 8 or 9, you must survive 8, or I'm sorry, 10 turns, 10 of Suki's turns. Suki has to take a turn 10 times, and trust me folks, she is going to be bringing the hurt on your team. She's going to do her AoE attack, and she's going to do some absolutely devastating single target attacks. So, this one, this one's a nightmare. Um, but anyway, let's get in here and watch this footage now. Um, I've got a lot of other footage recorded. I've got, uh, Min Jung Woo Raid 9, I've got Abyss 39 and 40, and I've got enough PvP content to bring you guys another PvP video. Um, but I want to do this one now. Uh, I have to do the commentary on all this, but I want to do this one now while it's fresh in my mind, because I'm going to be pausing this video a lot to explain to you guys what's going on because there is a whole lot of RNG that you need to be aware of and I want you guys to be properly equipped with the right tools and the right knowledge so that you can clear this content like I did or however you want to but I would recommend a strategy very similar to this because I've spoken with a few other people who have completed this content and the strategies are basically the same there's maybe a unit or two that you could switch up but this is kind of how you want to do it. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Well, first, I want to mention, with the fake ties, um, I, I recorded this screen 
I pre-recorded this screen here so that I could put it at the beginning of my video, uh, but then I just, since I was having to repeat the content over and over, I just wanted to be able to hit the repeat button, the restart button. So I recorded this and then just recorded the actual fight footage separately. I do want to mention, I used slightly different fate ties because it is very important that Kawuka goes last. The reason you want Kawuka to go last is you want everyone in your turn cycle to have taken their turn when Kawuka is ready to apply that shield because that is a two turn shield. So you want Kawuka to be able to apply the shield and then that whatever unit you put that shield on has two turns of shielding. Now you'll see what I mean when, when we get to, um, I think it's the fourth wave. Right before we go into wave five, I'll, you guys will understand what's going on a little bit better. For now, um, that's enough talk, let's just get this started. I will put a graphic up on the screen showing you the actual fate ties I ended up using for the actual fight where I cleared the content. I believe I actually completely removed Kawuka's fate tie in order to get Kawuka's speed down enough to where Kawuka is going last. Um, but anyway, so now, here's something interesting. I like to apply shield this first turn with Hasty. I experimented a little bit on applying the shield the first or the second wave. You can do it either way, but I do like to go ahead and get that shield up while the monsters are still, you know, a little easy to give Hasty's cooldown on her ultimate shield time to come down a little bit. Okay, wave two. First two waves are obviously very easy, but you know you still want to at least be aware of what's going on and try to have your team ready for the final three waves because uh, things do get a little hairy. Of course, you just want to use plain attacks, save all of your skills because you're going to need them. Okay, here we go. Wave three. Suki's gonna yawn. Because as powerful as she is, I'm sure she gets, you know, a little bored fighting some of these units. Now. Okay, now here's something interesting. I'm gonna pause it just for a second. I'll try to be as brief as I can, but you really need to understand some of these strategies. I'm gonna try to save you the hassle of repeating this, you know, 500 times. Okay, not 500, that's an exaggeration. But, I'm gonna save you the hassle of having to figure this stuff out yourself. I'm here to help you so that you can maximize your time playing the game. Now, if you go all out on Suki, at the beginning of wave three here, Hasty is going to use her ultimate shield on Suki, which is going to give Suki two turns of protected. And that's going to cause you all kinds of problems since you are trying to take out waves 3 and 4 as quickly as you can so that Suki does not wreak havoc on your team and you can go into the final wave fully prepared. Um, so you want to find a right balance here if you can. Actually, I think I can play the video for a minute here. You want to take... Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. One more pause. You can Oblivion Suki now, or you can Oblivion her the next turn that Meyer takes, but I like to do it this first turn so that Meyer's Oblivion can be back off of cooldown in time for wave four. This is how I cleared it, so this is what I recommend, but you may be able to tinker with it a little bit, but probably not too much because there are a lot of specific things going on. But anyway, if possible, you want to be able to bring Hasty really, really low on health on this first turn, just like I'm doing here, because that will prompt Suki to heal Hasty instead of attacking you. And then, because Hasty is so low on health, Hasty will attack you. Hasty will attack you instead of applying shield to Kang Suki. And part of the reason you want to shield your units early in the match with Hasty it's because since your units all have shields on them right now, protected, you know, buffs from Hasty, Hasty attacks your Hasty instead of another unit on your team, which means your other units aren't taking the damage, and because Hasty is getting, your Hasty is getting attacked 
her cooldowns are coming down faster. So, that's something to be aware of. That's how to make Hasty attack you instead of shielding Suki. Now, now we want to go all out on Suki. I'm using Meyer's ultimate to bring Suki's health down. Um, of course, Hasty will have to attack Hasty because she's taunted. But, I'm going to use Wansul's ultimate here. We're going to take out Suki as quickly as possible. Suki is down in wave three, and we are in great shape. Everyone is still shielded. Hasty is still quite full of health. Now, wave four. Things get incredibly fun, but some of the strategies are similar to wave three. You want to try to do damage to someone other than Suki to prompt her to heal someone instead of attacking your team. So as you can see, I'm bringing Hasty's health down so that Suki will heal her. Now, I also attacked Lee just to take a little bit of his health off, just to see, you know, I didn't do that every single time, actually. This was a unique one where I decided to do that, a unique try. So Suki actually ends up healing Lee instead of Hasty, which is interesting, but regardless. Now, when Lee does this AoE taunt, you will notice there, when Lee does this AoE taunt, this is going to factor a lot into how well you're going to do as to what units Lee's three-person attack taunt move does. Now, I got incredibly lucky here. Let's see if I can back that up just a little bit. Um, well, I, I'm trying to pause it. There you go. I got incredibly, incredibly lucky here. Lee actually missed the two other targets. Lee attacked Hasty, and Hasty's invulnerable right now with Kawuka's shield, and Lee missed the other two targets, so their protection stays in place, and they are not taunted. So, good luck trying to repeat that or imitate that, but... You know, maybe that's what it takes to clear it. You know, I don't know. I tried this many, many times with a few different strategies, and this is the one that worked. Now, now this is something interesting. In a lot of the previous attempts, I would go ahead and use Kang to reduce Kawuka's cooldowns and give Kawuka a turn in order to use Kawuka's AoE attack to dispel these buffs off of the enemy units. Hasi Wu has put an attack and a crit chance boost on the enemy team. Now what I typically was trying was giving Kawuka a turn here and dispelling those buffs, but what is interesting since I have Hasty still shielded and all of my other units except Kang has the protected buff, I decided to do something a little different this time I think. I hope I'm telling you guys right. Yes. I went ahead and just attacked Hasty instead. I saved that cooldown reduction. Now, I have Oblivion Suki. Uh, I believe Hasty was taunted. That's why I had to attack Lee. Now, here, we're going to be trying to... What am I doing with Wansu? I'm, I'm going ahead and trying to take out um, Hasty. And now Kaluka is using the ultimate. I just, I, I'd still use the ultimate at this point in the fight. I just didn't use Kang yet to force it, because all of the protected buffs, or most of the protected buffs, were still on my team. Now, because Hasty had that Kawuka shield, she did not take damage when, when Suki did that AoE attack. And neither did my team, because they also had Hasty's protected buffs. That is key. Now, I have reduced Kawuka's cooldown, and now I'm just trying to take out these enemy units as quickly as I can and try to get things set up for the final wave. Now what have I decided to do here? I don't recall. I had to do a lot of thinking here. I decided to go ahead and shield. Who did I give the two-turn shield to? I gave it to Wansu. 
things are really coming down to the wire. I'm that was. I'm really glad that Suki just attacked Pasty just then instead of someone else. That would have messed things up. Now Suki is dead, and now I'm trying to calculate whether or not I can take out both of these units real quick before Wansul's shield before Wansul takes another turn because. You have to have two turns of Kawuka's shield on Wansul, you see right here, I just shielded Wansul. So Wansul has two turns of shield now. Now it is an absolute must, I must take out these two units before the final wave. So I'm checking here, and by the way, if you guys didn't know that, uh, you can actually click, um, whoops. You can click this button up here in the top right that, that kind of looks like um, uh, cell phone signal bars. If you click that button, you will see the upcoming cooldowns of everyone who's about to take a turn. So what I was looking for there on that screen, I wanted to see that Meyer had her ultimate available. That's what I was looking at. Since Meyer had her ultimate available, I was confident that she could do a lot of damage to Lee because she has unit type advantage over a tank. So instead of attacking Lee, I decided to attack uh, Ha Si Wu with Kang and Well. And now, Meyer kills Lee, and Hasty is about to kill Ha Si Wu. And, you know, like I said, folks, a lot of RNG, a lot of specific things are going on in this fight. But if you can get to this point, where your team is in good shape, uh, Wansul has two turns of, of Kawuka shield and the immortality left, and um, and make sure Wansul is as slow as possible. This is another key, because remember, Suki has to take ten turns before the fight is to win the fight. Suki has to take ten turns. So you want her to take a whole lot more turns, as many turns as possible, in proportion to your team, or Wansul specifically, because Wansul is the last man standing for this fight. So I actually only put a fake tie on Wansul, like a very low fake tie that just had like 8 speed on it. It's one of my little B units, level 30 B units, because I needed that 8 speed to make Wansul faster than Kawuka. Um, so that Kawuka would go last. But now your stats and your setup and your fake ties, you know, everything might be a little different, but I'm just telling you what I did to try to make you understand the kinds of things you may have to do to clear this content. I even had to take speed gear off of Kawuka, and, and I, like I said, I had to use a, a subpar, a, a terrible fake tie on one soul just to make him as slow as possible, but still faster than Kawuka. So, okay, let's take a look at the final wave here. It is a nightmare, folks. So, Hasty actually survived that single target attack. I was very surprised. Usually, that will kill anyone. Okay, so now Hasty's dead. Everyone's shield is off of them, or everyone's protected is off of them now. Now, Kawuka and Wansul still have Kawuka shield. Now, Wansul took one turn, and he still has one more turn of Kawuka shield. Now, Suki is going to take out uh, Kawuka. Take out Kang, and the rest is really history at this point. Like I said, if you can get that perfect setup going into the final wave, and making sure one soul is slow enough so that Suki takes her 10 turns before one soul takes too many turns, you know, you've got it in the bag. I really can't imagine doing this raid with any other strategy, or any other team really, but now some people have said that they have cleared it using Kira instead of one soul, and someone else said they cleared it using Suki as the tank instead of Hasty. But anyway, it's all the same strategy, the same idea. So there you have it, Suki took 10 turns, and she's gonna say goodbye, and there you go. Mr. Korean Zombie himself, one soul, took MVP. And there you go, you get to see the fake ties again anyway, but, you know, whatever. I got a nice six-star natural uh, crit chance piece of gear. Um, but now I already leveled it up three times to see what that fourth stat was. I was hoping for speed, obviously, but it did not roll speed. But still, six-star natural speed, you know, we'll take it. We'll take it all day. 
And I'll show you what I'm going to get here for the, the EX, uh, EX prize. And there you go, Veronica. Um, so there you have it. And I actually already had Veronica's EX weapon. So I'll have to compare that with what I already have. I mean, I, I wish it would have rolled speed, of course, but, you know. You can't always get what you want. So we just have to do the best we can. But anyway, I know I was a little long-winded. I do apologize for that. But at least now I'm confident that you guys have the tools and have the knowledge to know what you need to do to try to use the units and the team that you have. Hopefully you have some of these key units built up because I think you're going to really have a hard time with this content without at least without Kawuka, Kenny Hanwell, and, and Meyer for that uh, uh, two-turn of bleeding cooldown. Now, if, if you're really, really good, and you have an, uh, incredibly strong units, I believe I heard of one other person using Johan for the um, for the Oblivion, but I believe they also used um, a second healer. Uh, of course, Kang Hanwell for the cooldown reduction. But uh, But anyway, so there you have it. One of the hardest fights in the game, cleared today for you guys, bringing you the strategies you need, giving you the knowledge you need, and we're going to call this video done. That's a wrap. So until next time, I will talk to you guys soon. This is Hemroid. Out. I bet you expected something funny at the end of this video like all of the other ones. The truth is, there is nothing funny about Suki Raid 9. But, if you insist, what do you call a fish with no eye? Do you give up? You call it an eyeless fish.